Intro. Synchronicity is a concept first introduced by analytical psychologist Carl Jung, which holds that events are meaningful coincidences if they occur with no causal relationship, yet seem to be meaningful related. A few months ago, my dear friend David Spitzer told me that his wife Sherry was just finishing up a year-long course on Tanjali's Yoga Sutras. I was intrigued. I always wanted to know more about it. <coughs> All my spiritual practices use bits and pieces of it, yet I never studied the complete picture. So two weeks ago on Facebook, I stumbled. Upon this post, it was a free 11-day course presented by the Art of Living Foundation. It was a talk presented by Sri Sri <coughs> Ravi Shankar. Talk about synchronicity, perfect time. Now, this is an online course I'm taking it during this global shutdown. I signed up on a Friday, and the course started on the following Monday. This course was given in 1995 in Switzerland. Granted, that's 25 years ago, yet the content hasn't changed in over 2,500 years. Usually, the talk is around 40, 45 minutes to one hour, with around 15 minutes of group discussion. I would highly recommend it. The discussion talked about the key. Components of his talk. One way I learn <laughs> is by writing and teaching. A few months ago, I wrote a book called *The Way*. It was a commentary on the Tao Te Ching. This book was written by Lao Tzu over 2,500 years ago. In the 70s, Jane. English translated this book. It was considered a classic for its time. It's still considered a classic. I'm slowly but surely trying to connect the dots between spiritual traditions. I've been posting one chapter a day from my book, The Way and Diary of a Kabbalistic. This book is about Patanjali's Yoga Sutras. Don't let that title scare you off. I'm going to try to make it as simple as I can. I'm stripping out most Sanskrit words. This book was one of the original texts to help mankind on the road of life. It provided helpful hints for mankind to discover the jewel within. This ancient wisdom is the foundation for millions of people around the world. Many people use this wisdom, yet they don't know where it came from. I was one of them. I actually used this practice in my life, yet I wasn't aware of where it came from. Mind you, for over 48 years, I've been using these practices without knowing the source. What is the central theme of this book? Why was it written in the first place? Man. Has been fighting for thousands of years. Nothing good ever comes out of the war. Yet we continued fighting for thousands of years with no end in sight. Where does war first start? Inside of our minds. The Eastern world has said for thousands of years that that conquering your mind is the most difficult thing to do in the universe. I have friends who tried to meditate in the 70s and gave up because they said they didn't know how powerful the mind is. This book will give you tricks of the trade. Mind you, even not the tricks of the trade won't do you any good if you don't practice them. Most of mankind are reactive beings. We are like leaves blowing in the wind. We react to each and every situation. If someone does something you don't like, we automatically explode and put gasoline on the fire. Our subconscious runs the show. 
95% of our actions are dictated by our subconscious, while 5% is from our conscious mind. Our subconscious contains the good, bad, and ugly in life. From zero to around seven years old, the mind would absorb everything like a sponge. At that point in time, the brainwave state is theta. Theta is the sponge that soaks it all in and passes it to our subconscious. A wise man lives in the center of the hurricane. The winds of the mind are howling, its stillness lies inside. The Yoga Sutras provide practical, down-to-earth advice to take you on this precious journey of life. The human body, mind, and soul are all interconnected. Our present state of living is in total chaos. We, don't, we, we take responsibility for our own welfare. A few years ago, I worked on a firm that developed software for heart surgeons. Each step of the way in the operation, a series of questions and steps would be presented to the surgeon. Anyway, I casually talked to the CEO of the company. Why is the preventative medicine more pervasive? He told me that nobody wants to take responsibility for their lives. They want Western medicine and doctors to fix them. Well, no wonder we have such immense problems today. Common sense is uncommon. We have lost touch of the building blocks of life. Man builds sandcastles in the sand. The tide comes in and washes them away. There is no foundation in place. Look at the world today. A global shutdown is occurring, and Mother Nature sends all of us to our rooms to think things over. Yet, we get bored. We can't see the forest from the trees. Most of humanity never stops and asks questions like why this is occurring. We live in automatic mode. Did you know that systems were put into place thousands of years ago? These systems provided practical, down-to-earth advice to help you in every nook and cranny in life. All help and guidance were included in these systems. They were never taught in our schools. Consequently, our world is in chaos. We are human beings, but currently, for thousands of years, we are human doers. What do you do for a living? Currently, youngsters go from one activity to another. By the time they are adults, this is embedded directly into their subconscious. The state of being is forgotten. Humanity has lost the jewel. They think it exists outside of them, yet the jewel exists inside of them. This ancient book provides pathways to discover the jewel. I say this a lot. You are the universe. You just don't know it. Most people roll their eyes when I say this. Michio Kaku said the following. In string theory, all particles are vibrations on a tiny rubber band. Physics is the harmonies on the string. Chemistry is the melodies we play on vibrating strings. The universe is a symphony of strings, and the mind of God is cosmic music, resonating in eleven-dimensional hyperspace. I love this example from Paramahansa Yogananda. Another time, I was sitting in the movie theater watching the movie on a screen, and then I looked up into the projection booth. I saw that the projectionist was not interested in the movie because he has seen it over and over again. Instead, he was reading the book. The projector, projector was doing its job. There was the sound, and the benefit of light was casting realistic images on a screen, and there was the audience caught up in the drama. Now the wise men of old and the quantum scientists are both talking about the same thing. 
But there is a huge difference. A quantum scientist looks external, while a wise man looks within. The sages throughout time would talk about our true nature, yet the majority of people really roll their eyes when hearing about this. There's a poem I wrote talking about the jewel within. It's been there all the time. What are you talking about? What's been there all the time? You are the universe. You just don't know it. There are about seven octillion atoms in your body. All our atoms are billions of years old. At the deepest level, you are the universe in human form. <laughs> wow, isn't that incredible? On top of that, you are hardwired to discover your true nature. The signpost of God all, all around you and inside of you. Yet, we are talking on our phone while driving down the freeway of life. The greatest miracle of life is keeping you alive. You are magnificent. Every single cell of your body is custom designed by God. You are infinite. Your body will someday die, yet your true essence will go on forever. You have the opportunity to discover your true nature. Behind your breath lies the answer. What is keeping you alive? All the great masters have said to be aware of the essence of your breath. Behind your breath lies your true nature. Infinite kindness, love, and compassion. This is the water that will put out the bonfires of anger and hatred upon this land. The sun is appearing on the horizon. Mankind is waking up from his slumber. We are going from darkness to light, darkness has nowhere to hide. Discover <laughs> your true nature, it's been there all the time, ponder is over. It's been there all the time, the greatest game is being played right between your eyes. When I was young and in India, I heard this incredible poem. There's a palace in the sky without any foundation. A blind man sees a light more beautiful than a million suns. A deaf man listens to the unstruck music. A lame man climbs the ladder and drinks the nectar and gets totally intoxicated. 
the poem goes on and on. The final clincher is the following. Only a wise man understands what I'm talking about. These aren't just some pretty words. The entire universe exists inside of your heart. Yamas, list of do's. Yamas and their complement, niyamas, represent a series of right living or ethical rules within Hinduism and yoga. It means reigning in or control. These are restraints for proper conduct. They are a form of moral imperatives, commandments, Rules or goals. Ahizba. Non violence, non harming other living beings. Both Gandhi and Martin Luther King use non violence for their causes. What does that have to do with me? Just think in America has spent around 30 years fight not fighting a war. Where do these wars begin? Inside of our minds. Our movie industry makes billions promoting violence. Bullying is rapid among children. The United States has more murders than any Western civilization. More people in America have died from shootings than all the wars that soldiers have ever died in. Violence is almost the norm in America. We talk about the Wild West, but today, in Kansas, citizens can walk around with weapons. Just last week, a group with some atomic guns held a rally <coughs> in the Michigan Congress Hall. We have millions of people hiked, hooked on drugs and opioids. Drug manufacturers make billions, knowing that people misuse the drugs. Many of them got hooked by taking the drugs prescribed by their doctors. People flame each other on Facebook. This all stems from a violent mind. People love violent <coughs> movies <coughs> and shows on TV. We have become numb and immune to it. Violence creates dark storms of the mind. Being Nonviolence starts with clearing out your own rocks, boulders, and weeds. It all stems from our disharmony in the mind and body connection. People who are violent are in a state of fear. Anything small can tip them off. The opposite of <coughs> violence is peace. Peace only comes from within. Peace is a state of awareness. It is a state of being. When a person lives in peace, automatically, <coughs> one is not violent and not harming. This means to oneself and others. True peace is, <coughs> is the awareness that we are all one. This being goes <coughs> from the awareness of me to we. Sancha. Truthfulness, not falsehood. There is so much more than speaking the truth. There is an Indian saying, Sat Chit Ananda, which means truth is the consciousness of bliss. When the mind is absorbed in truth, the mind will be in bliss. Truth is a state of being. 
Absolute truth occurs when one's will is aligned with the will of God. This is the ultimate state for man. One goes from darkness to light. Mind you, this is an endless journey. Non-stealing Everyone knows that you shouldn't steal a purse from an old lady. Well, I hope so. Some people are so desperate, they will do so. And its deepest, it is letting go of the desire to possess or steal anything. This gets quite deep. Stealing is a manifestation as greed. Whatever you want and don't possess, you can't take it away from someone. This is very subtle. In the business world, people steal ideas all the time. My wife told me stories where she performed something and her boss got all the credit. We live in a world where we are trained at a young age to possess goals, objects, and things. We try to outmaneuver, outmaneuver each other. We are taught to be clever, which is another weakness and obstacle. Most people who are clever are probably cunning and want their way. They try to control the situation. These traits must be overcome. All spiritual traditions talk about weeding the inner garden. One must be conscious and aware. Non-stealing is a state where thought, words, and action are in alignment with God. This takes constant awareness and effort. One must begin to modify, to monitor one's thoughts and actions. The Kabbalah would say stop, look, and listen before, during, and after you speak. In each and every moment, be aware and conscious. Remember, you are peeling the onion in life. One is fine-tuning the guitar of life. Brahmachari, chastity, marital fidelity, or sexual restraint. The following comes from Sri Sri Ravi Shankar. Brahmachari is celibacy. Celibacy brings you strength lots of strength. Brahmachari has a higher meaning than just celibacy. Brahma means infinity. Chara means moving in infinity. Knowing your past, your vast nature, not thinking that you are just a body, but you walk like you are a glow of light. You move in the world as though you are space. This is when celebra celebracy naturally happens. Do you see what I'm saying? When you're sitting in meditation, you do not feel like you are a body, a lump of heavy weight, 80 pounds, 90 pounds, 100 pounds, 60 kilos sitting there. You feel so light as though you are like a feather, isn't it? So many people cheat on their marriage at times is an, an epidemic in society. One thinks the grass is greener on the other side of the hill. Yeah, it's burnt. One who wants to be humble in life must not cheat and, and steal in life. One does not possess another wife or husband. To reach the goal of union with God, one must be in alignment with God. One must not harm or hurt anyone. By having, by having marital fidelity, trust is broken in the marriage. Once trust is broken, it's hard to put together again. Our society is obsessed with sex. So many kids are brought up on pornography. The sexual act is something that is not special. When I was young, many of my friends would boast who they got laid with. It was a trophy. Madison Avenue sells sex. Sex makes a lot of money for them. We have taken something precious and downgraded it for young women or get date raped. There is a huge slave trade for young runaways. Tremendous sexual violence occurs daily in the world today. We are going from darkness to light. 
the world at large has a long way to go. Not avars, non possessions. The definition of a virus is excessive or unsatable desire for wealth or gain, greediness. Imagine, we have eight billionaires who have more wealth than half of the world's population, yet they are never satisfied. They are like a ghost drinking a glass of whiskey and it simply drains to the ground. They can never be satisfied. How many people lie and cheat to get to the top? We have politicians who in crisis hold on their power and they ignore the desperate prayers from their citizens. I'm writing this during the global shutdown. Over 30 million people have lost their jobs. No money is coming, to, coming in. Politicians are fighting with one another so they can hold on to their power. Our school systems teach our children that it's the survival of the fittest. You must fight your way to the top. Your fellow student is your enemy. You have to outfox him. Mind you, this starts at a young age. It is built into our subconscious. The mentality of conquering the Wild West is much alive today. We are destroying this planet because of this. Much Mother Nature has sent us to our rooms to think things over. Unfortunately, we just want things to come back to normal without thinking the reason why. The definition of possessiveness is demanding someone's total attention and love. Many people don't have the awareness of self-love inside of themselves. Consequently, they demand their partner for total attention and love. This will always lead to disaster. This is the lowest state of love when one tries to control one another. Love is not an object to be controlled. Love is not a trophy to show off to the world. Look how beautiful she is. God is love, and love is God. A person who understands this puts his life, obtains the states of awareness, goes beyond these petty issues. Unfortunately, mankind is stuck somewhere in the middle. Remember, our subconscious is running the show. In the Upanishads, a great Indian holy book, is this saying, Sat Chit Ananda. Truth is the consciousness of bliss. When the mind vibrates with truth, the awareness is in bliss. The entire universe is alive. The entire universe is aware. The entire universe is built with the supreme bliss and love of the Creator. This experience lies within your heart. It's your choice. Look inside for the answer.
mind and body. What came first, the chicken or the egg? The body and the mind are so tangled with each other. It's like a huge bundle of string. Imagine, for each thought, you have a series of chemical reactions gets released into your bloodstream. The Buddhists had the following saying, saying, Hunting anger is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. You see, each time we get angry, a series of harmful chemicals gets released into the body. Some people are so out of sync that the faucet never gets turned on. Even if they want to, it takes time, patience, and effort. Our subconscious is driving the show. It said, if someone says something to you that you don't like, you will automatically get angry. The anger is wired directly into your body. By the time we reach the age of 35, our body is so hardwired directly from the subconscious. It is driving the show. We are on autopilot. Habits? Good and bad are hardwired directly into our bodies. We are like leaves blowing in the wind. Each morning, we get up. We do the same thing over and over. It's like in the old days, listening to a record and the album is scratch. They will play the same thing over and over and over. This is our life. Even if we want to change, we have to start to rewire our circuits consciously. In order for that to happen, one must be able to break away from a beta state to change. You see, a beta state of mind can't reach the subconscious. So if you say an affirmation to change, can't reach the subconscious to rewire the circuits. This is where meditation comes in. A person who meditates learns over time how to connect to the quantum field. The stronger the connection you have in this field, the more capability you will have to rewire the human body. The scenarios are endless. It's up to your imagination. You have free will. The quantum field doesn't judge us. Yet changing and rewiring your circuits require you to be in sync with love, kindness, patience, tolerance, and compassion. This is why it's so important to meditate. This is why it's so important to be conscious and aware in each and every moment. The wise ones in the past would monitor their thoughts and actions. If they were in a situation where the person would say something to make them angry, they would simply smile. Why put gasoline in the fire? They understood that by getting angry, they are drinking their own poison. Yet, this is difficult to do. That's why it takes constant training. We have people in office who will Twitter whatever comes to their minds. They don't know how to stop, look, and listen. To be honest, this was never taught in schools. Look at our nation today. All sides are pissed off and can't work with one another. This is a society that is emotionally immature. In order for the world to change for the better, one must take responsibility and learn new ideas to discover their true nature. We must all ponder over the state of mind we are in. As a society, we must discover ways to become mature adults. We must help those in need. We can do this. Millions of people are waking up from their sleep.
your body is your drugstore. The art of Taoism <coughs> has been around for thousands of years. I find it quite fascinating that they talk about the elixir of life. This elixir is not an herb or any external substance. This elixir exists inside of us. In India, they talk about the nectar from God that flows within. Yet here we are taking drugs for our ailments. Each drug has a huge side effect. No, I'm not saying don't take drugs. I'm saying maybe there is a better way. For example, in China, you pay your doctor when you are healthy. You don't pay when you are sick. Mind you, in modern China, this isn't always the case. But the point is that you focus on balance and harmony. In our culture, everything is fragmented. We don't focus on the harmony of the mind, body, and soul connection. When I was young, I heard about the concept of being in harmony with the universe. To be quite frank, I had no idea what they were talking about. Here's an example of being out of balance. In my junior year, my parents took our family to Yosemite. It's probably one of the most incredible places on the planet. Yet, I couldn't see the forest from the trees. I was miserable. Why? Because I missed the ocean. Now, that's being out of balance. Before we can begin to be in harmony with the universe, let's try to be in harmony with the planet Earth. Currently, man has divorced himself from our precious Earth. We pride ourselves with the technology that we have, yet we are totally emotionally immature with the Earth. Where am I going with this? Imagine if man was in absolute harmony with the Earth. Can you imagine the wisdom that it has? It might tell you that your body is your drugstore. Every thought, whether positive or negative, secretes over 1,500 positive or negative chemicals. Currently, most of America is totally out of balance. Look at the problems today. I used to work for the USDA. I saw my friends taking up vaping. I couldn't believe how much smoke came out when they exhaled. It was at least five times the smoke from regular smoking. No wonder there is such an epidemic. Imagine there are drugs existing inside of you that are dormant. In order to receive them, you must be in balance and harmony. In each and every moment, we have the opportunity to be conscious and aware. Currently, we are playing the same tapes over and over again. I can guarantee you that these elixirs of life work better than any physical drugs. Your body has the intelligence to produce these for you. How many people listen to their bodies? How many people monitor their thoughts? How many people dive into silence? How many people monitor their actions? You see, there is a moment-by-moment -moment conscious event. When we are unconscious, chaos exists. Look at the world around you. Does it seem to be in balance and harmony? The question is, do you want to change? Are you content with the current conditions? This isn't just Richard on a soapbox. I'm asking real questions. What do you think? You are your savior. No one is going to save you except yourself. All the scriptures point the way, but we must walk on this path. This human body is hardwired to find God within. We are on this incredible journey to discover our true nature. We are out of balance, and yet we can learn how to be in balance. These are exciting times. Millions of people are waking up.
AAA? Where's your chemistry kit? We are all playing with our own chemistry kits. Unfortunately, we aren't aware of it. Many people blow themselves up without realizing it. In each and every moment, thousands of chemicals are being released throughout your human body. Mankind is spinning out of control. We are drinking our own poison. We get angry at someone or political point of view. In the meantime, we drink our angry poison. We then wonder why illness arrives on our doorsteps. The wise band understands the repercussions of negative thoughts and emotions. Moment by moment, one plays this video game of life with awareness. One taps into the infinite ocean of love and compassion. This is our true home. My advice is learn how to change your own chemistry. Remember, you are the master chemist. Only you are playing with your chemistry kit. Ponder this over. This could make your life so much easier. Recently, I read an incredible article which describes the nature of consciousness. It was talking about a term called panpsychism. During the 1920s, Bertman Russell came up with this term. It's kind of like what came first, the chicken or the egg? What comes first, a human body or mind? Or is there awareness beyond that? Is the universe aware and consciousness? Is there a conscious quantum soup of consciousness? Does a rock or a flower aware? Does consciousness require a form? How big or how small can the form be to be aware? Is dark matter aware? Is the sun in the sky aware? What denotes awareness? Some people think, which I also do, that the foundation of the universe is consciousness. The entire universe is aware. Before the Big Bang consciousness existed, this is not the first time a universe was created, nor will be the last time. Like the incoming of breath and the outflow of breath, the universe comes and goes. Granted, it takes billions of years, but still, that is a blink of an eye for eternity. In this article, it described that even particles are alive and aware. These are part of a cosmic soup where everything is tied together. The entire universe is comprised of this soup. Imagine making a homemade soup. You blend it all together and combine milk or cream. Your family loves it. Now you can't take out a single ingredient. You can't. In the same way, there is a universal soup of consciousness, which we are part of. It is quantum. It is beyond time and space. We always think in linear fashion. In the quantum world, the past, present, and future are melted together. There is a whole set of chaotic laws that we can't even conceive. Man thinks that by using logic that they can understand the quantum soup, but it's beyond logic and rational thinking. Personally, I think the great mystics got a piece of the puzzle. Not the entire puzzle, but a piece of the puzzle 
contains the whole puzzle. It's like a hologram. A small piece contains the entire piece of the puzzle. What if a person who meditates can be in a place where they are receptive to the inner light inside? Imagine this light is the same light as the quantum universe. Everything is a part of this light. E equals MC squared. Everything is energy and light. <coughs> Everything is alive and aware. Maybe, just maybe, a meditator can see and feel the quantumness of the universe. Maybe the laboratory of life exists inside of us. Maybe we are created to find and discover this inside of ourselves. Personally, I think we're in the beginning stages of development. While we still are babies in emotional development, we still fight and war with each other. We use our precious discoveries of the universe to make atomic bombs. We have a president who tweets, my button is bigger than your button. A thin thread is holding a knife over our heads and we are oblivious to it. I have great hope for the future. I feel that scientists and the world inside will lead the way for humanity. Just think, when a scientist truly begins to open the door inside, they will begin to operate at a deeper level. They can embark on the scientific discoveries of the inner and the outer. Both of them will lead to the same place. Life is a mystery. Both the scientists and the mystery, mystic are embark embarking on an incredible journey. The light particles that a mystic sees and the same light particles that a scientist uses in CERN Switzerland. Both of them are in different laboratories. One is outer and the other is inner. Personally, I think the mystic has an advantage. The human body is wired for this experiment. The human body has five senses, which there are five internal senses within. The human being can learn how to become aware of the consciousness of the universe. A human being is hardwired for this experience. Yet most of the time, the car is sitting in the garage. The garage door needs to be opened, and you must back out the car and take it for a spin. Humanity is just beginning to understand to open up the garage door within. When they do, scientists will go in, a, in another completely different level. There, the universe can show humanity gifts we can never imagine. You see, without kindness, the universe will only show you so much. It'll be like handling a small child an atomic bomb. They wouldn't know the damage what it could do. We are in that state. Without humanity becoming a kind man, we will never progress to our true potential. You see, the universe is kind and aware. The universe is love and compassion. Become like the mystic and discover your true nature. You are the universe. You just don't know it. mind and body. What came first, the chicken or the egg? The body and the mind are so tangled with each other. It's like a huge bundle of string. Imagine for each thought you have a series of chemical reactions gets released into your bloodstream. The 
Woods had the following saying, saying Holy hunted anger is like drinking poison and expect the other person to die. You see, each time we get angry, a series of harmful chemicals gets released into the body. Some people are so out of sync that the faucet never gets turned on. Even if they want to, it takes time, patience, and effort. Our subconscious is driving the show. It said, if someone says something to you that you don't like, you will automatically get angry. The anger is wired directly into your body. By the time we reach the age of 35, our body is so hardwired directly from the subconscious. It is driving the show. We are on autopilot. Habits, good and bad, are hardwired directly into our bodies. We are like leaves blowing in the wind. Each morning, we get up. We do the same thing over and over. It's like in the old days, listening to a record and the album is scratch. They will play the same thing over and over and over. This is our life. Even if we want to change, we have to start to rewire our circuits consciously. In order for that to happen, one must be able to break away from a beta state to change. You see, a beta state of mind can't reach the subconscious. So if you say an affirmation to change, can't reach the subconscious to rewire the circuits. This is where meditation comes in. A person who meditates learns over time how to connect to the quantum field. The stronger the connection you have in this field, the more capability you will have to rewire the human body. The scenarios are endless. It's up to your imagination. You have free will. The quantum field doesn't judge us. Yet changing and rewiring your circuits require you to be in sync with love, kindness, patience, tolerance, and compassion. This is why it's so important to meditate. This is why it's so important to be conscious and aware in each and every moment. The wise ones in the past would monitor their thoughts and actions. If they were in a situation where the person would say something to make them angry, they would simply smile. Why put gasoline in the fire? They understood that by getting angry, they were drinking their own poison. Yet, this is difficult to do. That's why it takes constant training. We have people in office who will Twitter whatever comes to their minds. They don't know how to stop, look, and listen. To be honest, this was never taught in schools. Look at our nation today. Both sides are pissed off and can't work with one another. This is a society that is emotionally immature. In order for the world to change for the better, one must take responsibility and learn new ideas to discover their true nature. We must all ponder over the state of mind we are in. As a society, we must discover ways to become mature adults. We must help those in need. We can do this. Millions of people are waking up from their sleep. Emotions. 
our emotions are scattered all over the place. Most of us are reactive beings. As you probably know, by that time you're 35, your personality is usually set in stone. Your subconscious is basically running the show. The body and mind are so ingrained. Our habits are driven from our subconscious. It's like we react without being aware. Our subconscious has taken over. Yes, that's a good thing. Yet, at the same time, it creates many problems in our life. When we go through a traumatic experience in life, it creates an emotional scar in our subconscious. All of us have traumas that have occurred in our lives. Many people may ask why this guy is so angry all the time. Most of the time, it has some event that happened years ago that never got resolved. The circuits are still hardwired to that event. Humanity has been trying for years to learn how to go beyond our emotional issues. In the quantum field, there is no trauma. In the quantum field, there is no anger, hatred, and any negative emotions. We are trying to solve our emotional issues using matter over matter. By using the quantum field to heal, we are using kindness, love, and compassion to heal and transform ourselves. We are using our free will to tap into the quantum field and rewire our nervous systems and our body. Mystics have done this for thousands of years. Modern day scientists are using the tools of the mystics and combining them with scientific instruments and protocols. These are exciting times for humanity. We are on the verge where it will be a common everyday practice to rewire our brain towards quantum awareness. We are only moments away. Yes, it will take time, but the sun is arising. Man will soon realize the harmful effects of negative thinking and negative emotions. They will see the practical evidence of how it has put man in a downward spiral in life. We have been fighting for thousands of years. Need I say more? Humanity is stuck on the merry-go-round of life. The mystics have declared there is a way around out of this mess that we have created. This is a divine video game. Once a person understands the rules and why the game was even created in the first place, the person simply smile. We have free will. The message in this book is, you are the universe. You just don't know it. Think outside of your box. The quantum field exists everywhere, and that includes inside of you. New thought. Did you know that in each and every thought you have, there is a chemical reaction to your thoughts? Your thoughts create who you are. They create your, your habits, your personality, and state of mind. Your subconscious is driving your car in life. Most of us have put the car in remote control. We aren't aware of the power that is keeping us alive. We don't realize that we have a genie within. Each and every thought we have reinforces our views on life. We are a collection of all the thoughts since we were born. We, we contain the blueprints of all thoughts. Our thoughts are where we stand today. 
It's kind of amazing. The most of mankind has forgotten the power of thoughts. We never ponder over what we think we become. We haven't put these two and two together. Personally, I think without meditation, mankind can't truly see the forest from the trees. We are so much focused externally that we don't even know about the internal world within. I really don't have to say what happens when the world at large does this. We have been fighting for thousands of years. Many people think that that man's nature. Well, it is if we as a world only focusly focuses externally. Need I say more? Did you know that meditation over time will help slow down the mind? Many people have a hard time falling asleep. It's a major problem all over the world when the faucet of adrenaline can't be turned off, and you're in a high beta state of mind. It's difficult to fall asleep. The chemical meta, meta, melatonin can't be released. This chemical is responsible for telling the body to fall asleep. Many people take drugs to pe- to put them to sleep. And unfortunately, the drugs will put them to sleep. Yet they are ex- extremely harmful, and over time causes tremendous damage to the body. Yet the drug industry is, is interested in making a profit. Meditation brings one. To the awareness of the quantum field, when one meditates, one begins to tune into a field of kindness, love, and compassion. When one becomes kind, this person will have, over time, kind thoughts. Life is like a tuning fork. Whatever you think, you vibrate at that frequency. If your thoughts are anger. I can guarantee you, you will be in a state of anger. You will enforce your anger into your subconscious. Over time, this becomes your habit, and this becomes your personality. Many years ago, I heard the Dalai Lama would go over his entire day when he was going to sleep. <coughs> he would pay attention and think how he can improve his thoughts and actions. He would ponder over and consciously progress to be a better human being. At that time, I truly didn't understand it and see why it was so important. Years later, I see it as a foundation for humans to transform. If we, as a society, becomes kind in all areas of life, the world at large would change for the better. So yes. Meditation is the key to help transform our thoughts. When one begins to be aware and conscious of the quantum field, the mind slowly begins to transform. This is the ultimate brainwashing. You are learning how to clean the clothes of your mind. This is how true healing takes place. Because we are unconscious, we live our life that is not in harmony. Consequently, our world at large is in chaos. I remember I worked for a short time for a company that has a software program for heart surgeons. This program would guide them in certain heart procedures. I remember asking the owner of the company why the healthcare industry didn't promote preventative medicine. His answer was the American public does not want this. They expect doctors to heal them and not to take responsibility for their own health issues. This is how far off we are. A society that doesn't understand and know the quantum field is an immature society. Look at our political system. We want to build a huge wall. The quantum field builds bridges. The quantum field does not judge. The quantum field is never angry. The quantum field does not know about war because we are totally out of touch with our true nature. This is where we stand today. 
new thoughts will arise when humanity becomes to embrace the quantum field. All the wisdom to solve any problem lies in that field of intelligence. You can only think based upon your emotional maturity. The universe will only show and help based upon your awareness in life. The more humanity taps into their true essence, the more our world will transform. In the future, we will see that presently humanity is at a kindergarten state of awareness. We think we are at a high level. We have all these cell phones and think we are so in advance, but we use them for texting while we are driving our cars. We think we are so in advance. Our society thinks the indigenous people aren't civilized, yet they have been in harmony with Mother Earth for thousands of years. We are sawing the branch we are sitting on and are so smug in thinking we are superior. Our egos have led us astray. Ponder this over. You are a piece of the puzzle. new concepts. I'm sorry to say, but many people are locked into their box. Many people can only think inside of their box. Take a look at American politics today. They are in shambles. One side can't talk to the other side. Both sides say the other side is to blame. We are locked by our subconscious mind, and we do the same thing over and over again. Our concepts of who we truly are is limited. As a matter of fact, they are archaic. We are so focused externally that we have forgotten our true nature. It's like we can't see the forest from the trees. We must be open to new concepts and ideas in order for society to progress to the next level in the video game of life. Many people get stuck at a certain level in the video game and call that life. They have no idea that you can be aware and conscious of the quantum field. The sun is about ready to come up for humanity. It's been a roller coaster of a ride for thousands of years. War has been gone on, it seems like an eternity. Yet, millions of people are waking up from their slumber. A new dawn is occurring for mankind. Man is slowly evolving into a kind man. When humanity understands that we are the universe, incredible transformations will occur on this planet. You see, with greater transformations come new concepts and ideas are being developed and implemented on this planet. Take for example, kindness. Many people think that kindness is weak, yet the entire <coughs> foundation of the universe is kind. Slowly, over time, kindness will manifest in all areas of life. Take a look at politics today. 
The way politicians, politicians campaign today is to slander their opponent. opponent. We have politicians today who mock anyone who has a different point of view. Both sides of the party only vote on the issues that support, support their party. When true kindness comes into the picture, people no longer will support anyone who is not kind to their opponent. They may have different points of view, yet kindness allows a person to see through the other person's eyes. Kindness leads to love and compassion. Kindness allows a person to think outside of the box. Kindness can solve any problem on earth. Every problem has a solution. If you are stuck in your belief system, you will not be open to a practical solution, even if staring you in the face. For example, the quantum field is all around. You are the universe. You just don't know it. Humanity must learn how to think outside of the box. We must learn how to be tolerant for all. Light is winning the battle against darkness. Darkness is the absence of light. Currently, we are seeing chaos all around the world. Darkness has nowhere to hide. New concepts and ideas are being presented all around the world. Millions of people are looking at life's problems and thinking how to solve the problem on earth. Each one of us holds an individual piece of the puzzle. What good would a puzzle be if the entire puzzle was put together, yet your piece was missing? Ponder this over. Learn to think outside of the box. Go beyond your comfort zone in life. Mankind is on an incredible journey. We are going from darkness to light. We are on the journey to discover our true nature. As I said, we are hardwired to find God. We have everything set in place. The car is there, sitting in our garage. God is sitting patiently in the passenger seat. All it takes for you to use your remote control and open the garage door within. You see, it's only by your will alone can you open the garage door. Nobody will open the door for you, including the one in your passenger seat. You see, the law for human being is free will. You must make the practical decision to use your will to open the door within. Well, what does this have to do with new wiring? Our subconsciousness is totally running the show. In fact, almost every action we take is automatic. We go to bed, our alarm clock goes off. We use the same hand, shut it off, and go back to bed for five minutes. The alarm goes off. We shut off the alarm, we stumble out of bed, we go into the bathroom, we brush our teeth, we are trying to wake up. Off to the kitchen, we go to brew some coffee. 
It's time to head off to work. Just in time for rush hour traffic. We make a few phone calls along the way. Some of us text when the cars are stopped. We make it to the office and do the same dull routines. I could go on and on. Our daily routines in life are hardwired. We party on the weekends to release stress and wake up in the morning with a hangover. Day by day, year by year, we continue this routine. Our subconsciousness picks this up and reinforces it in our everyday life. Our wiring is complete. This is our being and personality. You are a combination of all the thoughts you've ever had. Mankind is locked inside of his box. So what is this new wiring you're talking about? Imagine you are the universe. You just don't know it. What if I told you that slowly you could rewire your circuits to understand and experience your true nature? What if your true nature is part of the quantum field? It is part of the universe and God. What if I told you you are magnificent? Meditation is a way to directly rewire your circuits within. It is a way to slowly reprogram your subconscious. You are a computer program for your subconsciousness. You have the capability to totally transform and change into a butterfly. I have said this before, the mind is like a tuning fork. Whatever it focuses on, it will vibrate at that level. Meditation allows one to tap into the quantum field, which is infinite love, kindness, compassion, and tolerance. These are just a few traits. The more one meditates, these traits are rewired into our circuits and create a new wiring within. One learns to stop, look, and listen in life. Every moment a person makes a conscious decision to act and to be aware. This leads to a proactive human being instead of a reactive being whose leaves is blowing in the wind. One learns, over time, to be in the center of the hurricane instead of the 150 miles per hour of the winds of the mind. Our world at large is totally stressed out. Yet a person who meditates slowly learns to be in the center of the hurricane. Yes, this takes time and effort. But with the same time and effort it takes to be angry and pissed off in the world is the same time and effort it takes to be a kind of person. Everything takes time and effort. Mystics have talked about this for thousands of years to go outside of your box. They have talked about the human body as designed to experience God within. Many people try to use affirmations to program directly to our subconscious. Only when a person learns how to dive deeper into meditation will this work. Imagine, from zero to seven years old, everything that came before you, the good, bad, and ugly, was directly stored in your subconscious. Your brain waves were in a theta state. From seven on, the waking state is a beta. Your subconsciousness is totally online. Over 90% of your actions are dictated by your subconsciousness. For so many people on this planet, they live lives that are totally stressed out. Their brain waves are in high beta. No matter what affirmations they say, they can't rewire and reprogram their subconsciousness. Only by learning how to meditate learning how to go into more coherent brainwave states can one learn to reprogram the subconsciousness. These are exciting times. There is a marriage between science and spirituality. Science is giving the direct evidence to help mankind discover his true nature 
and discover the quantum field within. I don't know about you, but I'm blown away for the possibility for humanity to change. We are on the journey of going from darkness to light. New tools are coming our way. Just you wait and see. The more a human being embraces his true nature, one's imagination becomes larger. The universe starts to give you a different point of view on this journey of life. Ponder this over. Are we really living in the matrix and don't realize that we have been asleep? new personality your personality is driven by your subconscious over time one cements into a subconscious all the thoughts feelings and emotions our daily habits contribute <coughs> to mostly form our subconscious in order to change and reprogram ourselves we must become conscious and aware we are like the snake shedding a new skin. In order to change, we must develop a new personality. This requires great courage. We're learning how to drop the old and embrace the new. Why do humans resist change? Even <coughs> if they know it would be beneficial to them, we resist it. We love our comfort zone, even if it's making us miserable strange, isn't it? Many people would rather wallow in their misery than overcome their problems and have a better life. What kind of personality can I become? At the simplest level, how about one who is kind in all circumstances? In the midst of adversity, one would simply smile. If another person would get angry at you, you would simply smile. It takes two to tango. Kindness will not participate in putting gasoline on the fire. How about learning to see through the other person's eyes? You could see his point of view. You would actually listen to what the other person is saying. Most people don't. Most people are thinking what to say next without actually listening to the other person. How about loving life? You wake up in the morning and are so excited to be alive. What a glorious day it is. You get up and meditate. You get in tune with the quantum field. Your mind, body, and soul gets filled up with love, kindness, and compassion. You are in sync with the universe. Your will is focused on love. Your mind is your friend. Your sweet thoughts throughout the day, you become a kind man. Incredible synchronicities occur daily. You love humanity. Each and every moment you are living in harmony. One loves to be in nature. Gaia, Mother of Earth, is by your side. She knows your name, then you know that. You are living once again in perfect harmony with her. Each person discovers his, her gifts to help solve the world's problems. With each problem, a solution lies. One begins to acquire incredible wisdom. This is part of your true nature. 
you are in harmony with the universe. Exciting times are ahead of us. We are becoming a new human. Humans learn over time to directly reprogram ourselves. We discover we are our own personal genie. In the past, our genie would work behind the scenes and we would be <coughs> oblivious to it. Mankind slowly learns that through his whim, he can learn how to reprogram his life. Someday in the future, this will be taught in schools through the world. Science and religion are merging. Many new fields will open up. The higher our society advances, the more harmony will be discovered. Mankind will discover that war is obsolete. The bickering and fighting will stop when we can directly experience the threat that ties us all together. We are going from me to we. This is how the world changes when we see that unity fall. These are exciting times. The news mostly shows the chaos, yet millions of good deeds are happening all around the world. Yet, it takes effort and, convic and conviction, but every time you get it out of bed, it takes effort. Why not just reprogram your skull, yourself and discover your true nature? Imagine a hidden gold mine exists inside and we search throughout the four corners of the earth to find it. One can spend lifetimes trying to discover it. It's a joke when one realizes that it's been there all the time inside of you. Mystics have been saying that for thousands of years. You're learning to become a mystic. You don't have to give up your life. In fact, you must embrace life. Ponder this over. Exciting times are ahead of us. You are closer than you think. Close your eyes. Focus on gratitude and love. When you feel a small sparkle of love inside of you, you are connected to the quantum field. Now, with your eyes closed, focus on kindness. When you feel yourself experiencing kindness, you are connected to the quantum field. How about peace? Concentrate on peace. When you feel peace inside of you, you are connected to the quantum field. How about compassion? Concentrate on compassion. When you feel compassion, inside of you. You are connected to the quantum field. You see, you are closer than you think. This is not some abstract object. This is the real you. Yet, this is just the tip of the iceberg. The more you pay attention to something, the more aware you become. The more attention you pay to your true nature, the more aware you become of it. And this is just a simple fact. We think that love, kindness, and compassion get triggered by external events. These emotions are our true nature. We have just forgotten, and any time we can connect to our true selves, 
Meditation is the way to discover our true nature. Imagine in the beginning when you closed your eyes, it was like taking a sponge bath. Imagine in time that by practicing meditation, you can jump into the infinite ocean of love, kindness, and compassion. How would that change your outlook on life? All problems that you would have seem so insignificant. Presently, most of us are stressed out. We can hardly wait for the weekend. Yet imagine that meditation leads one from being stressed out to a place where one loves life. One wakes up every morning and is, <coughs> and is happy to be alive. When one truly begins to, moment by moment, be aware of the quantum, quantum, one's life is totally transformed. Truly, it's impossible to explain it, but we'll keep on trying. For me, signposts are all around us and inside of us. We live such a busy life that we are oblivious of we have all these incredible motions that are our true nature, yet we don't realize how incredible they are. It's like we experience these emotions randomly in our life. It's like falling in love with someone. We fall in love and think that the other person is responsible for it. As easily we fall in love, we fall out of love. Thousands of people get divorced. Meditation reveals that the infinite ocean of love exists inside of you. This path reveals your true nature. This path shows you how to be a proactive being. We are not leaves blowing into the wind. We can be in the center of the hurricane. What does this mean practically? It, me it means that we know how to live beyond a beta state of mind. What does that mean? It means you won't be totally stressed out. It means that you can laugh at light, at life. It means your adrenaline is not out of control and can, can't be turned off. It means that you start to live in harmony and your health will increase. One learns to talk to the body when the body starts talking to you, there is an incredible harmony between the mind, body, and soul. Your mind becomes your friend. In our society, millions of people have addictions, and the mind causes such pain in people's lives. I believe that the world's problems can be totally solved when the world at large embraces the quantum field. All practical solutions exist inside of the field. The more humanity will embrace this field, which by the way is our true nature, the faster the world will be a better place. Isn't it amazing that man has fought for thousands of years? Many people say this is our true nature. If we were created by God, do you think this is our true nature? It doesn't make sense. Yes, this is the journey of going from darkness to light. I completely agree with that. I feel that the science, scientific, and religious world is being merged. For the first time, common man is being shown practical tools to discover the jewel that exists inside. It doesn't matter if you believe in God or not. The essence is the same. So the next time you get totally stressed out, simply close your eyes, watch your breath, imagine peace of mind, hold on to that. This is your true nature. This is the first step of being conscious and aware of your true nature. In this manner, by experiencing even a little peace, thousands of incredible chemicals are being released in your body. Remember, each and every thought you have, either positive or destructive chemicals are being released into your body. You are your own master chemist. You are in total charge of where you are going in life. We were never taught this in school. 
It's so obvious, and science has proven that thoughts create chemicals which create emotions. You can say you can't separate the mind from the body. I don't know about you, but I'm completely fascinated by this. I've been meditating for around 48 years, and I'm still a youngster, learning about the mysteries of life. I am completely blown away. Starts to implement new, higher emotions, new thoughts, new concepts, new wiring, and new personalities. But one, then one becomes a new human. Christ was a perfect example of that. For thousands of years, man has been fighting and has been involved in wars. It's been quite barbaric. The world still fights wars all around the world. Many people say this is man's nature. In reality, it's not. We are going on a journey from darkness to light. For thousands of years, we have been covered by different shades of darkness and light. Anger and hatred has ruled the land. Man doesn't know how to be civil, so we go to war. Is obsolete. Yet, in order for a war to become totally obsolete, one must transcend our emotional state of mind. Anger and hatred towards one another must not occur. Mankind is presently becoming a butterfly. We were a worm, and now millions of people all around the world are turning into a butterfly. In a matter of time, we will become butterflies. Yes, this will take time, but a new human is emerging from the ashes. The greatest transformation is slowly occurring on this planet. Science and spirituality are merging together. You see, each individual is a piece of this grand puzzle. A new human is born. When we embrace God moment by moment in our daily life, it's just not the words, but a state of being. The new human will learn how to be conscious of the quantum field, 24 hours a day. This new mindset will radically change the world. It will affect every single aspect of life. We will see through different eyes. Mankind will become a kind man. We'll begin to see the threat of love that ties us all together. We will become one unified mind. Yes, you will still be an individual, yet your awareness will be in a state of oneness in life. You will see that humanity is an extension of yourself. Presently, we only see me. We are going on a journey from me to we. I know. I hope this excites you. This is not a fairy tale. It may take millions of years. You see, the sun is arising. There's no doubt about that. Mankind is waking up from its slum slumber. I really believe that mankind can change for the better. In each and every day, people are waking up. In the past, the mystic. Path was out of reach for the common person. 
Brazilian people are seeing easy and practical ways to morph and change into a brand new way of seeing life. All the mumble jumble is taken out. This does not change the experience of the quantum field. Nothing is taken away, yet people now can practice simple techniques to directly connect to God. I feel all the help in the universe is here. By our will alone, we can ask for help in our daily life. We are not alone. Yet in order to experience this, we must open the door within. Humanity must learn how to rewire ourselves. Humanity must change and be open to greater adventures in life. We are seeing where man's present state of mind is and the consequences that occurs. Just look at the politics today. We are totally divided, yet the new human will totally transform and leave all darkness behind. You see, when one t totally embraces the quantum field, darkness can't exist. Darkness is the absence of light. Someday in the future, we will look back at the present and we will say, what an incredible roller coaster ride that was. What an incredible journey. This is the greatest story ever told. We are on the verge of blowing ourselves up through nuclear war, yet we took a leap into changing ourselves. The consciousness of man knew deep down inside that we could overcome our petty differences and become united. Not Every civilization ends this way. Some have totally destroyed themselves. A new dawning is occurring for mankind. Just you wait and see. Where do these memories come from? When I was young, I was fascinated about the universe. Somehow, I knew I came from the stars. I knew that the universe existed inside of me. Well, I grew up in Newport Beach, California. It's not a place for realizing your true essence. Back then, Yoga and meditation were considered to be quite radical. It was like you were a kami. My parents had this Buddha statue and a Kuan Yin statue that I was completely fascinated about. I can't quite put it into words. <coughs> Somehow, these statues conveyed to me that life is so much grander than what we know. I knew that the universe existed inside of me, yet I didn't know how to tap into it. Somehow, I knew that I'd been meditating for thousands of years. Mind you, not in a human body, but united with the quantum field. This is mankind's natural state of existence. This is where we come from. And, and when we die, this is where we return. Somehow, I was aware of this. Inside our DNA lies all our memories from the past, present, and future. I know that may seem absurd, yet quantum theory clearly is thinking outside of our three-dimensional box. The following is a lecture I attended in Arizona on May 7, 1987. 
Many of my questions were answered. It may seem unconventional, which it is, yet the quantum field is totally unconventional. You have to learn to think and act outside of the box. One learns slowly how to rewire ourselves into a state of kindness, love, and compassion. One learns how to become conscious in each and every moment. This is our true nature. Do you love your mouth? Yes. <laughs> do you know why you do? Because I love myself. But do you know why it is so familiar to you? No. Are you prepared for an evenness? Yes. It will cause controversy within you. Well, here goes. <laughs> you have not been on this planet regardless of what limited entities have given unto you in your fantasy of it, and therefore they've responded for 34,000 years. That is a truth. And this mouth directly comes from there. The whole of your cellular memory, you have been unlimited God for 34,000 years. You are likened unto a woman on the day of yester and unto Sophia in today. Counsel with her. Take your nutrition with her on this day. It will be a great saving grace for you. You brought it here because you loved them. This is the cellular memory of 34,000 years ago. That is why the penis functions differently than others. That is why the heart is different, the breath, because it doesn't understand how the 20th century works at all. Great entity. We shall do much together, you and I. So be it. You counsel with this man. He is a great companion of yours. Mindfulness. This is the dictionary definition of mindfulness. The quality, the state of being conscious or aware of something. Their mindfulness of the wider cinematic tradition. A mental state achieved by focusing one's awareness on the present moment while calmly acknowledging and accepting one's feelings, thoughts, body sensations used as a therapeutic technique. I remember when in the early 2000s I went to Phoenix, Arizona for a business trip. Back then I was working for Charles Schwab. There were probably around a couple of thousand employees attending the conference. One day of the conference they had some classes that you could choose to attend. One of them was mindfulness. To be honest, at that time, I heard of this Buddhist term, yet I never understood its meaning. It was a great lecture. I was amazed that Charles Schwab even would present this topic. Since then, mindfulness has hit the mainstream. It's kind of a buzzword right now. You see it on commercials on TV for selling products. But what is mindfulness? According to the dictionary definition, a mental state achieved by focusing one's awareness on the present moment while calmly acknowledge and accepting one's feelings, thoughts, and body sensations used as a therapeutic technique. 
Let's break this down a little. A mental state achieved by focusing one's awareness on the present moment. How do you focus your awareness on the present moment? What is the present moment? Does mankind ever truly connect to the present moment? Just think, in the quantum field, it is beyond time and space. Past, present, and future are one. The Buddhists have been studying mindfulness for thousands of years. They have been known to tap into the quantum field for thousands of years. Mind you, they didn't call it the quantum field. They might have called it enlightenment or a state of Nibbana. I remember about 15 years ago, I read this incredible Buddhist book called Crystal Clear. This book talked about the various stages of enlightenment. Now this could be a rumor, I can't prove it, but the Buddhist has some doubts to release this book to the public. This was utmost sacred knowledge. They decided to release it because the techniques were so simple. They involved concentrating on your breath. Mind you, this is an ancient technique used in meditating practices all around the world. But have we ever pondered what is the power behind the breath that is keeping you and the universe alive. The universe is conscious. I'm sure you think I'm a broken record when I say you are the universe. You just don't know it. But that's the truth. <laughs> when a person begins to learn how to meditate on his breath, transformation starts to occur in the mind, body, and soul connection. One is tapping into the quantum field. Mindfulness is a state of bringing that inner awareness into the present state of mind. It's very subtle in the beginning. Mind you, your circuits are slowly being rewired. I often say that in the beginning, you meditate on God. At some point in time, God begins to meditate on you. You see, the more attention you put on something, the more attention is focused back to you. Mindfulness is a state of being in the quantum field, moment by moment. There are probably an infinite amount of stages of mindfulness. Let's dive deeper into this definition. A mental state achieved by focusing one's awareness on the present moment while calmly acknowledge and accepting one's feelings, thoughts, and body sensations used as a therapeutic technique. Meditation is a stepping stone to calmly acknowledge and accepting one's feelings, thoughts, and body sensations. This is where we can truly rewire the body and mind. When one is directed is when one is directly connected to the quantum field, one's emotions are a bliss, love, kindness, compassion, and gratitude. There are probably an infinite amount of positive emotion, emotions which we aren't even aware of. Just think, in this state, thousands of positive chemicals are being released into your body. Moment by moment in meditation, one has the opportunity to rewire our mind-body connections to be in harmony with the quantum field. Every person on Earth is hardwired for this. In order for this to happen, we must be aware. This is what the whole book is about. Our subconsciousness is 95% running the show. No wonder we have so many problems in the world today. Mindfulness is a way out of this solution. You could say a being, like the Christ or Buddha, learn how to be in perfect harmony with the quantum field. Yes, they didn't call it that back then. They used different technology, terminology. The essence is the same. This is just the tip of the iceberg on this discussion. Ponder this over.